So my dear devotees, let us uh, chant the verse of today. Jaya Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Jaya Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Jana Hai Te Pai No Shri Radha Govinda Jana Hai Te Pai No Shri Radha Govinda Jana Hai Te Pai No Shri Radha Govinda Please someone else chant Jaya Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Jaya Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Vinda Yes, and Vaishnavi please also. Jaya Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Jaya Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda All glory, all glory to the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda by whose mercy I have attained Sri Radha Govinda. This was spoken with great uh, feelings by the author of Chaitanya uh, Charitamrita. He feels uh, it is by the lotus feet of Lord uh, uh, Nityananda's mercy that he has attained uh, the worship of Radha Govinda in Brindavan Dham. Hmm? Purport. Shila Narutam Das Thaku who is famous for his poetic composition known as Pratana, has lamented in one of his prayers, When will Lord Nityananda be merciful upon me, so that I will forget all material desires? Srila Narutam Das Thakur confirms that unless one is freed from material desires to satisfy the needs of the body and the senses, one cannot understand the transcendental abode of Lord Krishna, Vrindavan. He also confirms that one cannot understand the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna without going through the direction of the six Goswamis. In another verse, Narottam Das Thakur has stated, listen to this, mm, Without the causeless mercy of Nityananda Prabhu, one cannot enter the affairs of Radha and Krishna. What is it? Heno. 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 Nitai. Vina by Radha Krishna. Paita Naina. Heno. Nitai. Vinabhai <laughs> Radha Krishna Paitanayana Without the mercy of uh, Lord Nityananda one cannot uh, obtain Shri Radha uh, Krishna lotus feet. Yes. Who is this confidential personality who seems to be the channel or the road uh, that leads us to our uh, true desires as Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Who is that person who uh, has really, this is a, a, a statement, poetic statement, dark a channel. <laughs> Uh, which brings us to the ocean of pure love. Mm. <coughs> Mahaprabhu said, Bedera agama nityananda charitra 
सर्व जीवा जनका रक्षा रक्षका सवामीता even the vedas cannot approach lord nityananda's pastimes lord nityananda is the father of all living entities he is their protector he is their friend wow i didn't know about nityananda being the father of all living beings in our tattva we understand krishna expands into balaram and um, balaram from him all living beings come you know so nityananda is balaram but this is very big concepts to put in a small pea like brain you know i think what we can all understand with how we are that god must be without an equal and without a superior in sanskrit asamurta we that we can understand god is top everything else comes but now we hear that god has a brother Ooh, that's very difficult i thought he uh, there's no one equal to him and no one superior more difficult perhaps it is to understand that he is an older brother means he comes before the older brother then the younger brother comes and perhaps most difficult to understand is that he has a father and a mother yashoda and mm, nanda maharaj how are we to understand this and not just repeat this as uh, undigested beliefs that don't help us when we need to to be connected with this truth you must know that the bhakti tradition teaches us that god can only be understood from two perspectives and it will be very clear don't worry you will we will get it one is the tattva these are philosophical truths and the other is rasas feelings uh, uh let me give you a very simple understanding which prabhupad he had to come up with these examples to make us westerners understand uh, a president of a country you can understand him in two ways i mean these two ways and uh, in- include many other ways but basically one you he's a president he's the leader his work is uh, very much defined by the laws of the country and he operates usually if it's not modern times within the laws that's the expectation um, and so on and he takes care of the important decisions that need to be made but then there is a total other perspective to the uh, mm, 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 uh president which has to do with a totally different perspective uh, when he comes home he is a, a husband a loving husband his wife complains why do you never help me in the kitchen <laughs> and he goes and cuts vegetables to have peace at home uh, mm, his children uh, uh, love him and th- and, th- and throw themselves uh, around his uh, uh, neck when he comes home and he is totally with the family at that time and there are many wonderful personal uh, uh, things going on so krishna a god is in the same uh, not the same but this is a, an example to help us understand yes on one level he is god the one who is praised in the bible and worshiped in the different world religions with or and uh, reverence or or devotion and so on mm, but then he has another aspect to his being and i must uh, tell you this is very very confidential in this other aspect we learn about his uh, most prominent quality his 
sweetness, the, the sweetness is Krishna's most, uh, uh, let us say, Maduratva, the most outstanding quality, uh, and he is very attractive due to this. Let me give you uh, another word, his lovability, I would say. No? Oh, we can love him, we can really love him. Have you ever been in love? Um, most people, uh, I heard yesterday a different definition of marriage uh, from a very intelligent person. He said, it means to learn to tolerate each other. I can't understand why someone would marry with this definition, but um, <laughs> this is an area which is anyways not um, reserved for my understanding. So, um, his lovability, Krishna's lovability, his accessibility, uh, for those who don't speak English as their mother tongue, like me, accessibility means it's possible to, to come close to him, and also his vulnerability. Yes, God can be said about our activities, uh, and he can be very happy about uh, us. These are lovable uh, things which uh, have to do with the area of rasa. Mm -hmm. Rasa is, however, it's not only a secret. Rasa is a confidential truth that is out of the reach of most. Let us return to our example. Uh, if anyone would go to the president and complain, why don't you help me cut my subjis, you know? <laughs> or if he would uh, storm at the pr president uh, like his little uh, four years old son and, and throw him on his back, you know, when the president sits on the sofa, when the sun comes, jumps on him and wrestles him down. This is out of the reach of most of us. Normally there are no videos even about it. When private mm, videos about the mm, household affairs of uh, the Queen of England uh, were, were published, oh, it was a big problem. And it showed only how she was, you know, out with camping with her, uh, with her children and so on. It, it, wa the, it was understood. Now a confidential secret has been broken. It's breached. There, wa there was nothing, uh, you know, um, candid, candid, we say in German, heikel about it. It was just, I thought, well, why do, is there so much fuss about this movie? It was taken away from, from the public viewing, but of course we live in the world of internet. Someone had the link and <laughs> it, it was shown. Uh, it is out of the reach of most the private life of God. This is very important to note. But still, you can only understand the God from these two perspectives, just like the president. Imagine one day he comes, he comes home, he comes into the office, let us call it the green uh, house, uh, to, uh, to not evoke any, any, there is no green house as far as I know. <laughs> Only a yellow house or whatever it's called, the color. But you know, the, and he's he so so withdrawn, and and he's in a discussion, and he's so distracted, and he cannot give his brilliant insights, and uh, and and you know. So his best friend comes and says, "You're so different today." You're not performing like the president," <sighs> said the president. My, my wife said, 
because I never go and help her cut the subjis. She she doesn't love me the same way any longer. <laughs> I don't know how to handle this, you know. It's out of the reach, but still to understand why the president was like this, you have to understand that there was trouble in his other uh, uh, aspect of his life. What we what we hear in Krishna consciousness, what we see in Krishna consciousness, these pictures where Radha and Krishna are shown in a confidential exchange, is usually out of the reach of anyone. And I am uh, know why Srila Prabhupada and um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur they did not freely talk about these wonderful pastimes. I'm not making a comment that this should not be there. I'm just saying great devotees know this is out of the reach and a, a premature transcendentalism where we feel, oh yeah, I got it, I am a, I'm a, a, a devotee who understands rasa, will not help us. <laughs> this, uh, not, it's called spiritual bypassing, this type of... Uh, you bypass your own ineligibility in, in and uh, just go into an imagination. Uh, so, mm, therefore, Lord Chaitanya, he says uh, about... <coughs> so, Lord is Rasaraj, I'm sorry. He relishes mm, all relationships to the fullest extent. Raj means the king of all rasas, of feelings. He is... His world is a feeling world and a very deeply and, and uh, 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 constantly uh, um, uh, heaving, heaving is an English word, uh, uh, ocean of, of uh, loving emotion. Heaving means uh, in D uh, Deutsch, ein wogender Ozean. I, I know it's a difficult word. So, Lord... Krish, Lord Chaitanya, let's go back on track. Uh, uh, has an older brother. <laughs> the Lord has an older brother, uh, Nityananda, and he he understands. This is very difficult to understand. So he says, Badaguta Nityananda eha avatara Chaitanya de kaya jare se di kete pare. In this incarnation, Lord Nityananda is carefully hidden. Only if Lord Chaitanya himself reveals him can anyone see Lord Nityananda. Who remembers the class yesterday? Do you remember how Lord Chaitanya said, My older brother has come to Navadvi, please find him? Who went out to look for him? Yes. Shiva, Thakur, and Haridas. Very qualified. Very qualified. Could they find him? No. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu needed to take the devotees to where Lord Nityananda was. What is the word here? Badaguta, where he was carefully hidden. <laughs> In the house of who was it? Nanda, 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 you can visit this place today. It's a wonderful place. It's, uh, only I would say um, six minutes and 35 seconds from the main entrance away of our, of our Mayapur Chandra Diamandia. But there is another aspect why Lord Nityananda is so absolutely special. And for some devotees, this is absolutely ecstatic. For other devotees, I can warn you, this will challenge your understanding of, of divinity. Name Nityananda to me rupe nitananda. E tumi nityananda rama muti manta 
Lord Chaitanya told him, your name is Nityananda. This is how you are called, my older brother, Nityananda. Your form is also Nityananda, or full of eternal Nitya, bliss, or Ananda. You are Nityananda because you are Lord Balaram personified. Lord Nityananda would chuckle and would answer something different <laughs> back. Uh, he is eternal, Nitya, and Ananda full of bliss. We in this material world live in an Anitya atmosphere. Everything is temporary. You will see very soon you might all enter into a valley of tears because so many older, respectable uh, disciples of Prabhupada will leave. This is now the time where they turn, uh, they approach 80, and because they may have done so much austerity, their body is now not very strong to f fight very illnesses. Uh, so yes, one after the other will die. Last year I lost uh, uh, two of m people who were very important in my life. Uh, I'm speaking as a birthday child here. This is my father and my mother. <laughs> Without them I would not be in this body. Um, they left very quickly uh, after each other. They had announced it. If one of us goes, the other will follow very quickly, you will see, um, and we saw. Uh, so we live in the uh, Anitya world, in the material world where every uh, thing is passing by. You know, it's for a moment there in our view, and uh, it goes. I, I invite you to make an <laughs> experiment. Put a <coughs> banana, a mature banana, do we say mature? Ripe, we say. A ripe banana in the morning on, on the table. Should be a little warm, of course, there. And come back in the evening and you will see it is brown. <laughs> uh, the passage of time, although invisible to our eyes, uh, has effects that are very visible to our eyes, uh, effects that we often uh, lament about. We are separated from those we love and that what we love. Lord Nityananda is a resident of another world, eternal world. Mm, he is full of bliss and we are called here Nirananda. Yes, we have some uh, stimulation of the senses. Yes, and our mm, interpretation machine called the mind interprets it as a pleasure. And yes, we feel when we are famous, uh, <laughs> important, and significant. Uh, but these are n nowhere near to blissful experiences. They are just happening as mechanic byproducts of the material energy. They are not touching the true self with a quality of happiness that is entirely <coughs> spiritual. It's only an illusion that we identify with these things. Mm -hmm. So we who are in the temporary world, in the world where there is a, a constant fluctuation of happiness and distress, in fact, without this duality we would not experience either happiness nor distress. We need to be lifted up by a person from the spiritual dimension for, for, from the, I give you another word, more than human world uh, into our eternal true <coughs> home. Therefore, the, the Acharyas always think, by now you know the line, Sing along with me. He no nitai bine bai. Once, ag once again, uh, you didn't know it's coming, so it's coming here. <coughs> he no nitai bine bai. Radha Krishna paitenai. 
without the grace and blessings of Lord Nityananda, who comes to lift us from this Anitya Nirananda world, we cannot obtain Radha and Krishna. So he is a member of the blissful eternal world and he can bring us there. I would like to now go to the point which I announced as possibly challenging. There is a pranam mantra and in this pran of Lord Nityananda and in this pranam mantra you find a, a last line that will that we will have to put under the magnifying glass of your awakened intelligence. Not dormant, not sleeping, but awakened. Let us chant uh, this Pranam Mantra. Uh, it was yesterday on the board. Mm, I will maybe interrupt it so that you can chant. Please listen carefully. We'll, we'll make a little music for you. Mm. 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 We are a little ecstatic, so it should be a little high. Nityanandam aham nomi Nityanandam aham nomi Savananda karam param Savananda karam param Hari nama pradam devam Hari nama Avaduta Shiromani. I bow down to the Supreme Lord Nityananda Prabhu. He is the awarder or giver of the highest joy to all. He is the bestower of the holy name and the crest jewel of all Paramahansa mendicants. The translator of this, this particular translation come from Hungary and they have not dared to give us the translation of what is in Avaduta. Avaduta, Chiromani, the crest jewel of all Avadutas, something very, very important for our understanding. Avadutas are persons who don't play by the rules of this world. In the Bhagavatam, I would like to give you six examples from the Bhagavatam. Shukadev Goswami is called uh, 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 an avaduta. The verse says, avaduta vesha. He was dressed as an, uh, like an avaduta. What is the dress of an avaduta? The four directions of the sky, east, west, <laughs> what else? North, and so on. Vidura, uh, in the third canto, first chapter, uh, is called an avaduta, and Sri Swami in his purpose says, avaduta means having an unkempt or unclean body. Who else is an avaduta in the Bhagavatam? Very famous. He's K Krishna, Rishabdev, he's Krishna himself. And uh, Yadabharat, mm, Srila Prabhupada said, in this purport describes they have no concern of the material world. Narada and Angira. Mm. Sudama is described as an avaduta. He is mm, very poor, not washed. And Dattatreya in the 11th canto, he has dogs with him. <laughs> Many dogs are his companions, says Shita uh, Swami. So, Avaduta are these people who are uh, 
described by the academics as the mm, mad saints of, uh, of, 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 of God. You find them, for instance, in Vashana, there's one, the, the, when you see them, they are f you become extremely blissful in the, his association. Um, but he is an avaduta. It means they are often disregarded by the people. Remember Rishabdev, when he passed through the markets, the merchants threw rotten fruits at him. Uh, Shukadev Goswami, when he walked, there were children who went, hey, 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 hey. Uh, and uh, yeah, like this. Uh, they stopped following him when all the saints offered respects to them. Uh, uh, and they uh, so they're disregarded by people they have an unkempt appearance and they're not concerned with the material world they don't care for any rules of Varna and Ashram Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur describes an Avaduta in his comment on Chaitanya Bhagavat Madhya Leela 801 one who has jumped over the rules of Vanashram and Ashramas, the individual who is situated in the self is understood to be a yogi beyond Vanashram. He is known as an Avaduta. So, just to get this clear, he is absolutely disidentified with the body. He doesn't even know he uh, he has a body. He he sees things not with material eyes. He is a totally realized person, uh, almost on the opposite spectrum of us who are totally <laughs> attached to the body and the mind. You know, he is on the opposite spectrum. He, like a drunkard, sometimes the example is given, does not know if he has his head or if it fell down or if that he lies in the in the ditch uh, happily uh, singing songs you know in the same way the avaduta is detached but not by anything crazy and not by alcohol he is intoxicated with divine love of godhead um, he's an ecstatic human being in other words mm -hmm. and so on now this is very this needs to be looked at because it is so different than what we are used to uh, my dear de devotees in our movement you find those who are very uh, uh, those who are mm, niyamakraha, they reject the rules and act whimsically. This is on one spectrum. By the way, that's not an avaduta. No? <laughs> it's someone who acts whimsically, sometimes perhaps sinfully. You know, uh, he reject there's this, and then there is niyamakraha with a long A. Uh, there are people who insist on the letter of the rule even at the cost of losing the spirit. These are very rigid people. In uh, Iskon li lingo you would call sa uh, the first perhaps the free spirits and the others the conservative people or, and so on. An avaduta is different. He honors the rules as appropriate while pursuing the spirit. Let me give you an example. Let us say there is an accident. The first group would say, I don't care. It's not my concern. I'm not compassionate. No, no, no. The second group would go to the place of the accident 
But when there is a traffic light showing red, they would stop and wait until it shows green. And the third group, the Avaduta type, he would go also to the accident. There would be red uh, on the traffic light, but he, he would go through the red. Now the second group would say, hey, 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 red, 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 stop your car here. If the human beings stop following laws, our society will be animalistic. <laughs> we must follow the laws uh, to uphold the principle of law and order. It's a, it's a point which we can... Uh, I'm sorry, I can touch these. These are very deep philosophical things, but I, I want to get to a point so I can only touch it. I know this requires more discussion than two minutes such in Andan Swami. <laughs> um, my point which I want to show is to follow rules is absolutely important. We have an animal tendency which needs to be curtailed. Uh, curtailed means mm, curtailed. It needs to be tamed. Tamed is a better, better word. By uh, rules. Uh, but for instance, on the altar, there may sometimes appear situations where we just need to worship out of uh, out of uh, out of love in kirtan there may be situations when great uh, uh, feelings are uh, devotional feelings are required <coughs> this is a touchy point do you see that it is touchy yes. Ooh. our constructed world is attacked <laughs> by these dangerous people. <laughs> mm. It could lead to abuse of this. It, it could lead to abuse. Uh, it could destroy everything. Uh, but would you think the ambulance car can cross the traffic, the red traffic light, yes or no? Are there situations in spiritual life which need a very specific address? I see situations here on the project uh, where uh, rules alone cannot address the entire situation. I see many, many such things. As I said, this is a dangerous thing. This is all of a sudden spiritual life is becoming something more, more individualistic, so to say, and it could lead to abuse. Therefore, there are a few rules that can never be broken. All these rules have to do with sin, harming others, <coughs> being violent towards others. You will see in a moment how Nityananda is an avaduta, but he asked everyone to stop sinning and chant the holy name. He himself is never uh, in involved in anything. I want to tell you now a specific pastime. <laughs> Fast in your seatbelt. Are you interested? Yes. yes. From the Chaitanya Bhagavad. One day, out of ecstasy, Nityananda lost his consciousness of the external world and forgot what he was doing. He then removed his cloth like a little child who feels hot and tied it on his head. He laughed as he jumped about 
and stick it like a drunkard around the courtyard. Quickly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Nidai! <laughs> and he took his turban and quickly covered Nityananda. <laughs> there were tears of love flooding from his lotus eyes. He called out, Nimai Pandit of Nadia is my only lord. <laughs> when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hurriedly covered him um, with a cloth from his own head, like he had done many times before, <laughs> he sang very nicely. Uh, mm, 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 he sang this song. Name Nityananda to me. Name Nityananda to me. Rupe Nityananda. Rupe Nityananda. E to me Nityananda. E to me Nityananda. Rama Muti Manta. Rama Muti Manta. Your name is Nityananda. Your form is also Nityananda, or full of eternal bliss. You are Nityananda because you are Lord Balaram <coughs> personified. We hear that Balaram and Krishna in the tenth canto, they would play in the dirt of uh, Brindavan. They were naked. They were only, it was only a small little thread around their bellies and they were like little snakes they were crawling still they were not getting up moving through the mud and uh, then they would hear uh, uh, someone walking by or see someone walking by and they thought it's the mother or the father because they were so small but then they noticed it's not the mother and father and they were frightened and shrieked and uh, Yash uh, Shoda became aware and took uh, her little darling boy on her k wonderful precious sari and pressed him to her heart. I'm here. I'm your mother. I'm here. Mm -hmm. So, out of ecstasy, Nityananda, remembering mm -hmm, all this, lost his external consciousness. And uh, the text continues, uh, Chaitanya said, with great bliss you wander here and there. You act, no, you eat and you act in different ways. There's never a time when you are not blissful. <laughs> then he would say, mm, uh, by Lord Nityananda's mercy, one can attain devotion. Please know, that Lord Nityananda has all the power of Lord Krishna. <coughs> if Nityananda blesses someone, he begins to understand how trivial this material world is, this world of sense gratification, and he becomes detached from sense gratification. He thinks it's trivial, it's for the small minds, but I'm in a blissful state of mind now. Um, <coughs> and by Lord Nityananda's blessings we are relieved from the constant pressure of the material illusion that is on us and we can see the Vindavan world the Vindavan of which he is a member no? he is the member of the blissful world who comes to us in the uh, who are uh, uh, suffering in the this temporary world which has only this duality of happiness and distress which always go up and down. Mm -hmm. There are many verses like this but I don't I think uh, it is uh, clear uh, mm. Lord Chaitanya would said at that occasion one who has faith and devotion for Lord Nityananda has faith and devotion for me, Lord Chaitanya also. Mm. Many verses like this. Krishna does Kaviraj therefore sings, 
Jaya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Nityananda Charanara Vinda Jana Hoyte Painu Jana Hoyte Painu Shri Radha Govinda glory, all glory to the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda by whose mercy I have attained Sri Radha Govinda. My dear dev devotees, understand it like this. The spiritual world is different from our world. It's eternal, full of bliss. In the spiritual world only love rules. It's different <coughs> from this world where ambition and <coughs> desires for selfish, for our own security uh, and validation is so important for us. Spiritual world is very different. The flowers don't wilt there. Wilt means that they don't become old. When Krishna plays his flute, the water stops. The bees speak to Krishna. Very different from our world. Transcendental. The Rig Veda says, the words try to reach there, but they come back without understanding. The mind tries to go there, but it comes back without understanding. That is the spiritual world, not what people worship in this world or understand in this world. It is beyond. There was once a Brahmana. Uh, he had come to Navad. He, he was from Navadvip, but he had come to visit Lord Chaitanya. Uh, where was Lord Chaitanya staying in the la latter period of his life? <laughs> Jagannath Puri. And he raised his concerns about Nityananda. I don't understand Nityananda, he said. People say he's a sannyasi. By the way, he always was a brahmachari. Mm. <coughs> this is, but they, they say, say in, in, uh, when you are brahmachari in India, and you have the saffron cloth, people say, oh, sannyasi mahashai. No, no, brahmachari, brahmachari, brahmachari. See my 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 <laughs> tail here. <laughs> you know, no, 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 Maharaj, Maharaj. You know, <laughs> but he eats pan. <laughs> <laughs> and tambula. He always carries gold and silver on him and pearls. Which renounced person has pearls around him? He decorates himself with sandalwood paste and flower garlands. Why he div gave up a dunder and took up an iron staff? Yes, Lord Nityananda always had an iron staff with him. I have not yet understood why, but I'm happy to understand that I can't understand Lord <laughs> Nityananda. <laughs> why does he live in the homes of sudras? This is against the rules of the scriptures. I'm so doubtful. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then explained to the uh, uh, to Lord, uh, to this Brahmana, uh, the uh, the uh, different nature of Nityananda uh, by by saying he's in a total different category. Uh, Tsige Jung would have said, if you can understand him, he is not God. Western scholar. Ooh. All of you who go to universities, yes, you have to study Sigi Jung if you do psychology. I mean, it's compulsory. If, it's under, if he is understandable, he is not God. He's in a, 
I like this word so much. You will find it in my new book uh, a few times quoted. He's in the more than human dimension. It's just more. We are limited with our senses. I think you repeat this faithfully in your Bhakti Shastri courses. You know, the human being has three mistakes, no? He may, is bound to make, he's an illusion, he's bound to make mistakes. What else? Imperfect senses. Imperfect senses. Wow, he cannot perceive truth. And he has a tendency to cheat and say, this is the truth. No, no, there's so much more. So, uh, after explaining things, and uh, uh, he, he explained about the, uh, Mahaprabhu explained about offenses, that's for Mahaprabhu always a very big point, never criticize a Vaishnava, that is, he, he enchant the holy name. These two are, are necessary to go back home, back to Godhead. So he says, I have complete faith in Nitai. And then he says this famous verse, whether Sri Nityananda holds the hand of a Yavana woman or enters a liquor shop, his lotus feet are still worshipable even for Lord Brahma. My dear devotees, I do see some of you wrestling with this concept. I give you a bridge that you can understand. The spiritual reality must be, uh, it includes this, you know, in other words, there is everything what is here, uh, but there is much, much more. Mm. This is a prison house for the jivas who have left the, uh, it's a shadow reflection, but in the original, there's much, much more. Uh, to understand Lord Nityananda is only possible by here, by exploring uh, his, the wonders of his mercy. And that will be the subject of the next class. Mm. Then, and by understanding his pastimes. I only explained this one pastime, as far as I'm aware, this is one of two pastimes. The other pastimes are very understandable for the conditioned souls of this world. I mean, there are miracles which he, uh, which he works uh, uh, and so on and so forth, and, but they can all be understood. Why did I give you this class this morning? I wanted to show you the wonders of Krishna consciousness. I wanted to show you the uh, transcendental uh, aspect of it. Transcendental means it's beyond this world. Uh, it's a world of love. It's the world of miracles. It's the world of astonishment. Rasa means, what Rasa is always, Chamatka, Chamatka means, you're always surprised, uh, and so on. And uh, some of it. Mm, uh, mm. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives a very insight. I mean, he's always insightful. I want to quote something, and then I will ask our Keshava Maharaj to address us. Um, remember, uh, Balaram, in the spiritual world, he's the first manifestation of Krishna. He, from him, this Jiva Shakti, the uh, living entities emanate, which are, which are us. So, uh, our, our Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says, the jiva is a potency of Nityananda. No jiva, no living entity, can the m medium of can be the medium of the service of the Absolute to another Jiva. In other words, no living entity which is emanating from the 
Lord, uh, you know, can bring us and bring our service to Krishna. The Absolute alone may communicate his service to the separable constituents of himself. This is the real nature of the function of the Guru. <laughs> have you understood? Keshava Maharaj, you have understood, no? No, no, I think you have. In simple German language, es gibt einen Gott. <laughs> Und es gibt Lebewesen. Und nur Gott kann die Lebewesen zu ihm führen. Die Lebewesen alleine können nicht zu ihm kommen. I know for most of us, this is, what is this? What is he talking? In English. <laughs> there is a God, and there are living beings. On their own, no matter how they try, the living beings cannot reach God. But God can help the living beings to come to him. So, uh, simple enough? Should I say it in Croatian? <laughs> <laughs> I think you begin to understand there are things. Krishna consciousness is so wonderful. It is not always the very, very easiest uh, thing. It is something which has a spiritual dimension. It is uh, exciting. It is always new to be discovered. I must tell you also, all these things which I have, you know, I still know copy and paste. Uh, you don't know this art <laughs> any longer because you use computers. <laughs> this original copy and paste. I, I just was swimming in an ocean of, of nectar, you know, and everything is copy and paste here. It is from the scriptures and from the acharyas. Mm -hmm. because these are subjects that are wonderful. A takeaway for us, worship Nityananda and you will become blissful. And this bliss will empower you to let go of what is your obstacle in life and come to Krishna. No? That is very simple uh, uh, understanding. Finished. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I see our our Go Krishna. Yeah, uh, Syam Gopal is there. Syam Gopal, is supremely intelligent. Uh, also, I think you understood uh, because Syam Gopal is very intelligent. <laughs> Syam Gopal. If it's up to me, I would invite you to make a theater play. <laughs> well, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I, 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 all the time slots are already away. But uh, I have told many about your theater play. Uh, we have all laughed <laughs> about your theater play. It's very good. So, Hare Krishna, is it all right what you heard? Or are you full of doubts now? Yeah, you're from Bangladesh, you know. <laughs> of course, it's very nice. Nitoi! Uh, <laughs> Good. I will now request our Keshava Maharaj to come here because they are uh, cameras. Uh, and, and I will sit here. It's, it's easier for you. Sinityananda Rama Ki
We're still following some rules. <laughs> <laughs> Omagyana timiranta sigyana njana shalakaya Chakshur militam yena tasmai shi gurave namaha Vancha kalpaturubhyascha kripa sindhubhya evacha Patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha Shila Prabhupada ki jai Salina Satchinanan Maharaj ki jai Tyanandaram ki I just share some a uh, few thoughts. We have uh, five or ten minutes, so um, perhaps I'll continue from the thread of Maharaj. He was explaining in the end of his beautiful talk that the living entity cannot get to God. There's a gap. There's a distance. There's a a great um, expanse to cover to go there. Hari Sauri, who's a beautiful poet, Hari Parashad, mentioned this in one of his talks. He explains that Bala, Bala Ram, Bala means strength. Um, but he explains that Bala, or the strength of a king, is his army. So whenever a king is going to conquer a place, then first he sends Bala, first he sends his army, first he sends his uh, soldiers. And they prepare the ground and then the king will come. So in the same way when Krishna wants to bring all the living entities back home, back to Godhead, then first Krishna sends Balaram first. And uh, Balaram then shows the way. And in the same way when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to bring all the living entities back, then first Nityananda Prabhu who is Balaram comes first. So Nityananda Prabhu is uh, perhaps of all the avatars um, and all the manifestations of the Supreme Lord the most relevant because Nitya Ananda, one who is eternally happy. Perhaps that is what uh, every single living entity is looking for. When we were coming here, we went through the cloud line and I think Maharaj, you had a podcast is above the clouds. Yeah, so we were in London and we were under the clouds, <laughs> under the weather, and it was dark, dim, ra- rainy, windy. But then, as soon as you come above the clouds, it's beautiful. It's sunny. It's peaceful. It's clear. Um, and so there's this tendency within the living entity to always be under the clouds, under the weather. I think one devotee, uh, Srila Prabhupada, once said to one devotee, must I see your morose face every day? <laughs> <laughs> this tendency to be morose, this tendency to be an anxiety, this tendency to always worry, this tendency to be overloaded in the mind, uh, is so much there within the living entity. <laughs> Jiva Goswami confirms this because he says, If you look at the Bhagavad Gita, the very first thing Krishna says to Arjun, Asochyan anvasochastvam pragyavadam shabhashashe. Why are you lamenting? Don't lament. The very first thing Krishna says, Jiva Goswami commentates. And then he says the very final thing that Krishna says to Arjun, Sarvadharman parityaja mamekam saranam braja hamdvam sarvapape bhyo moksha yishyami ma sucha. So Jiva Goswami says the whole of the Bhagavad Gita is encapsulated within these two words, or one word, socha, which means lamentation, anxiety, moroseness, fear. Uh, trepidation. Jiva Goswami says this is the basic human condition. Everyone's life is surrounded by some level of moroseness. And therefore uh, the whole Bhagavad Gita is spoken to lift Arjun out of his moroseness. But then later on we understand that the knowledge is not enough. 
The knowledge is not enough to lift us out of our moroseness. Sometimes we have so many anxieties, so many worries, and then devotees give us the philosophy. We're like, oh, not again. I heard it all before. It doesn't help me. I still feel morose. And then we're realizing that the knowledge is not enough. Therefore, when Krishna comes, Krishna comes with Balaram. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, Chaitanya comes with Nityananda. Because Krishna represents knowledge, but then his first expansion represents the strength that comes from the mercy which helps us to actually uh, imbibe that knowledge and come out of our moroseness. So Nityananda Prabhu is lifting, lifting everyone out of their uh, moroseness. Um, one time His Holiness Jay Pataka Maharaj was giving a class and someone put their hand up and said, Maharaj, how can we get the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu? And Maharaj just looked at this person and he was completely confused. Maharaj, he, he looked at this person and he said, get the mercy? He said, that's not the question. How can you avoid the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu? <laughs> because Nityananda Prabhu is lifting Premananda Sukhi, uh, Haha Prabhu Nityananda, Premananda Sukhi, Kripa Balokana Koro, Ami Boro Dukhi. Lifting, lifting out of the moroseness of uh, life. Krishna Das Kaviraj here, uh, he's in ecstasy because he got the uh, mercy of Nityananda, but he was also in a state of moroseness, he was also in a state of fear. He was also uh, in great anxiety because the great devotee Miniketan Aram had been mistreated in his home. But then what happened in that, uh, in that fear and anxiety that night, Nityananda Prabhu came to him in a dream. Are are Krishna Das, Nakaraha Bhai, Vrindavana Yahataha, Sarvalabhya Hai. Are Are Krishna Das, O oh dear Krishna Das, Nagaraha Bhai, don't be morose, don't be fearful, don't be in anxiety. Vrindavana Yahataha, just go to Vrindavan, Sarvalabhya Hai, and there you will get everything. <coughs> so Maharaj was explaining that we can't, there's a gap between us and Krishna. And so Nityananda Prabhu and Nityananda Prabhu's representatives, they're leading the way, they're showing the way. Nityananda Prabhu showed Krishna Das Kaviraj the way, go to Vrindavan. Nityananda Prabhu showed Naratam Das Thakur the way, go to the Padma, there you'll get love. Nityananda Prabhu showed Raghunath Das Goswami the way. Yes, they met at Panihati and he said, Yes, go to take shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu now. So if you see what Nityananda Prabhu is doing, is he's basically directing everyone to the treasure. Goloketa Prema Dhan, Harinam Sankirtan. He's, he's, he's directing everyone to get the, pre the treasure of Prema. So this is, uh, is so significant. Um, Maharaj told the story of uh, yesterday of how <clears throat> Nityananda and uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met. And this morning Maharaj, you mentioned about how before Mahaprabhu took all the devotees uh, to meet Nityananda, he had sent out Srivas Thakur and he had sent uh, Haridas Thakur to find Nityananda. <coughs> An extra comment is given on this, that this is very, very significant, that Srivas Thakur and Haridas Thakur couldn't find Nityananda. It's actually a very deep point here. Ontologically, who is Srivas Thakur? Narada Muni. And ontologically, who is Haridas Thakur? Brahma. So the comment is given that who would know the universe, every single corner of the universe better than Narada Muni, who's traveled to every corner of the universe and Brahma who created the whole universe. If you wanted to ask directions to anyone for anything in the universe, 
those are the two people in the entire creation you would pick. Because who can know the creation better than the Creator and the one who's traveled to every single corner of the creation? Yet even the Creator and the one who's traveled to every single corner of the creation, even they could not find Nityananda, who is the Guru. And the teaching is that it doesn't matter what you do, only when good fortune arises, only when you get causeless mercy, only by some unimaginable, great uh, bhagya, does uh, Nityananda Prabhu and his representative appear in our life. And so, it's so significant this day, first to feel so much gratitude for uh, coming in contact with Nityananda Prabhu who is making it up, making up the shortfall and to also come in contact with the representative of Nityananda Prabhu because it's all great fortune. Uh, Bhagyavan Jeev, only a very very fortunate soul uh, makes that connection and so uh, so many things can be said about Nityananda Prabhu. I'll share one final thing. In his diary, Swarup Damodar, in his Kadacha, he mentions that each of the Panchatattva represent a shelter of different things. Each of them are ashraya of something. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is known as Rasa Ashraya. In Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, all Rasa is being experienced and that makes sense because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Rasaraj Krishna and when Rasaraj Krishna wanted to experience uh, the, uh, the rasa that Srimati Radharani tastes then he comes as Mahaprabhu so when you add Rasaraj Krishna and you add in the rasa of Srimati Radharani's taste then you have Rasa Ashraya the, the form of the Lord who can experience all rasa so Mahaprabhu is known as Rasa Ashraya. Advaita Acharya, he is known as Pancharatrika Vidhi Ashraya. He is the um, embodiment of someone who knows how to worship with the greatest intensity and focus like nobody else. Because yes, Tulasi Dalamatre Na Jalasya Chulukaina Va Vikrini Te Svamatmanam Bhakta Vatsala, Bhakti Bhyo Bhakta Vatsala. That he did that worship of his Shaligram, but he did it with such intensity, such focus, such devotion uh, that the Lord had to appear. So he teaches us how to worship with incredible intensity. Gadada Pandit, Sarup Damada says, is Bhava Ashraya. He is the. Um, embodiment of all bhav, all transcendental emotion. That makes sense because who is Gadada Pandit? Srimati Radharani and uh, the highest development of Prema is Mahabhav and it's said that Srimati Radharani is the embodiment of Mahabhav. So therefore Srimati Radharani when she comes she becomes the bhava ashraya. And Srivas Thakur Swarup Damada says he is the Shuddhanam Ashraya. He is the embodiment of, uh, of chanting the holy name uh, with a complete level of absorption in Srivas Angan that was going on. Uh, the intensity of that uh, chanting in its connection with Krishna is unparalleled. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that Srivas Angan is non different from the Rasa Mandali. It's the intensity of connection between the devotee and Krishna in both places uh, is non different, it's the same. So Srivas Thakur is the embodiment of that. So now the only one that's left is Nityananda Prabhu. If Mahaprabhu is Rasa Ashraya, Advaita is Pancharatrika Ashraya, Gadada Pandit is Bhava Ashraya, and Srivas Thakur is um, Shuddhanam Ashraya, then who is Nityananda Prabhu? Kripa? 
any other taker? Bhakta Ashraya? Jiva Ashraya? Ananda Ashraya? Well, it's good, we could make a new philosophy. <laughs> good. Yes, Maharaj reveals the answer. <laughs> Prema Ashraya, yes. Saurabh Damada says uh, Nityananda Prabhu is Prema Ashraya. It's interesting because we think of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Prema Purushottam, the embodiment of love. So sometimes the question is asked, why is he Prema Ashraya? Mahaprabhu is Prema Purushottam. But it's said that, yes, Mahaprabhu is giving and experiencing, but Nityananda Prabhu is uh, Prema Ashraya because the abundance with which he gives and the lack of discrimination with which he gives because of his intoxicated state means that uh, he is the one to, to go to, to, he is the one to go to for Prema. So, Nityananda Prabhu is uh, uh, that personality who is uh, giving prema, who is uh, giving us access and ultimately making us mad. Uh, Mahaprabhu, uh, uh, Maharaj was talking today about Avadut and how he's an Avadut, he's mad. And actually uh, this is the purpose of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Um, there's a very interesting letter Prabhupada writes to a GBC. So he's explaining in the letter many duties of what a GBC is meant to do. Of course, very highest position, you can say, of responsibility. But right at the end of the letter to the GBC, Prabhupada writes, And don't forget your main duty as a GBC is to become mad after Krishna. <laughs> So it's a very beautiful letter because it doesn't matter how, how many responsibilities you have in the world even if it goes to that level of seriousness it doesn't matter how many responsibilities you have the main responsibility for every single devotee is to become mad after Krishna and uh, the only way you can become mad after Krishna is if you get the mercy of the personality who is completely uh, maddened prema uh, mata nityananda and that is uh, Sri Nityananda Prabhu Nityananda Ram ki Nityananda Shri Maha Mahotsav ki Hare Krishna Thank you.